Quiet, numbskulls, I'm broadcasting. Ben Sorensen's Real Country Interviews, bringing you the stars of country. It's Ben Sorensen here, and this is my real country, and the smiling happy face on the other end of Skype is Amber Lawrence. How are you? I'm great. This is the first Skype uh, video kind of interview I've done, ever. Yeah, and it's your first time on Real Country as well, so... Oh. Oh, really? Uh, I'm, I'm pretty impressed with that. And, uh, you know, I'm pretty impressed with your new album as well, which is the reason why we're talking. Exactly. But before we get to that, you've been a busy girl. You've been doing all sorts of cool stuff. Mm. Tell me about your world. <laughs> it's been a busy year, a different kind of year. You know, no big touring, but, but lot, quite a lot of shows with Paul Costa around the country. He's a good fella. He's a good fella, yeah. Um, I squeezed in doing my album in between some touring and finished that, I think it was October when we finished, and thought that it was going to be, you know, maybe release in March next year, which is kind of one of the reasons I called it three. I thought it's my third album. We'll release yep. it in the third month. Okay, yep. let's call it three. Turns out I get a phone call oh, about mid-October. We're releasing in January. I'm like, oh, my God, I've got some work to do. And um, so, hence, uh, three is still the name. Doesn't matter that we're not releasing it in March. Well, it's still your third album. Doesn't matter yeah. when you release it. And it's that's still the your... main reason, obviously. Yeah. And so, you know, the th three is a is a great name for it. But um, as as I said before, it's it's, it's better than two. <laughs> a whole heap better than two. I don't think anyone would call their number t album number two, would they? <laughs> no, that'd be a bit of a um, dodgy album. <laughs> <laughs> Exactly. Uh, you know, in some ways I feel a little bit lazy calling the album three, but um, no, honestly... If, if you were lazy, you would have called it Amber Lawrence. Yeah, that's right. And lots of people said, because the track listing on the album, when you look through the track listing, none of the songs really lend itself to an album title. You know, like the first single, Everybody's a Mess, that could have been an album title, but it's. I just thought, no, it doesn't really sum up the album. The album's not about everybody being a mess. So, <laughs> having, having um, listened to it, the album isn't a mess at all. It's actually quite good. Oh, quite good. Come on, you can do better than that. Exceptionally good. <laughs> oh, I just don't want you to get a, 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 a massive ego, superstar ego, but I'm, secretly I love your album and you know Thanks. that. Thanks so much. Um, yeah, so, yeah, three, and then people said, well, just call it self-title. And, yeah, that felt pretty lazy. But yeah. then three, I thought, I looked up iTunes. Nobody, not many other people have done that before. Beyonce did four. Um, so I thought, yeah, three, I'm going to do it. And it's just three fingers. It's so easy. Yep. It's like, buy my album. It's like, and if people say to me at shows, which they do, which one's your latest album? They won't need to say that anymore. They'll be able to see it. They'll be able to work it out that, well, I'd say three would be the most recent one out of the three here, don't you think? Yep, <laughs> yep. And I'm, I'm actually keen to see uh, album number four come out. Yeah. And it's just a whole album of Beyonce covers done in okay. a country style. I could do that. Yeah, easy. I already do, actually. Um, uh, what? Uh, oh, 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 yep, oh, oh, done. Oh. I already do that in my show, so Perfect. yeah. See that? That's see. I'm just, career guidance, real country. Exactly. That's where you get it. That's Thank what you it's so all much. About. But uh, this album, uh, I I love because you've done, you you've written with some amazing people. Yeah. Um, and I I was just blown away by the song you wrote with uh, Colin Buchanan about the man, man across the road. Yes. What an awesome story that is. And the energy behind it was just, it, I, I love it. I love it. Tell me more about it. Well, The Man Across the Street uh, is a song about literally the man that lived across the street from me when I was growing up. And I grew up on a main street in Sydney, a really busy road. And um, this man, whose name was Bill, he, he was a Vietnam vet. And I, I was too young at the time to know anything about any of that. But I do remember that he used to sit out on his porch every day and... You know, he, he'd sit out there drinking. And it's with hindsight we know probably why that, that the Vietnam War had a bit to do with that. But how we connected was I, as a little toddler, escaped from my house and um, started crawling towards this busy main road. And mm. he, being out there on his porch, he saw me and he was a good man and he ran across the road, scooped me up, 
took me back to mum and, you know, essentially saved my life. There's a good chance that I could have crawled on that road and uh, not been here today. So I told that story to Colin Buchanan and, and we thought, you know, that's a really interesting story for a song. Wrote the, the most part of the song and then we came to the last verse and, and we kind of just realised that really the song is about him saving my life literally as a toddler but really on a, on a bigger scale in giving up his own life to, to go to war and, and come back a, I guess, a, a different man and not the person he was before. So that, that's really what the song's about and hopefully it's got some, it's got kind of some hope that he has found some peace because we don't know where he is now, whether he's even alive still, but I'm just so proud that I've been able to give him a song and say, you know, what you did for us, you made a difference. So, yeah, I'm really proud of the song. And, you know, this is one of the reasons I love Australian country music. Uh, yeah. Because we get to explore and we get to tell these great Aussie stories that no other genre uh, would do. And this is yeah. this is history. This is history that we're writing here. Yeah, and or, that's right. We that's being you. Well, you, you're involved somehow, aren't you? No, well, I, I buy albums. I listen to them. <laughs> <laughs> I comment um, on them. That's what's important about country music and, you know, for each of my albums I've always had a bit, you know, included a song that tells a story about someone and for this album it's the man across the street and, and you know, we say in the last verse there's a thousand more like him that paid the price and there is. There's so many unsung heroes out there, particularly Vietnam vets and I did a bit of research after writing the song about the Vietnam vets and um, it's really sad what happened to them and so this song is for them and uh, you know but it is for Bill and and I knew that it was it hit a chord when I played the iPhone demo you know the dodgy iPhone demo to my sister who is not one of those kind of cry at the drop of a hat people I played it to her and um, she did cry and I went oh I think I've hit a nerve so um, yeah. I'm really proud of it. Well I, I would be too and you wrote with um uh, Mike Carr as well, isn't he wild fun? <laughs> he is. I wrote with Mike Carr as Mike Carr, not as Buddy Good, okay? So the whoa, song... Whoa, 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 what? <laughs> oh, nothing. Um, the songs are very clear. It's like telling me Santa Claus doesn't exist, oh, you know? sorry. <laughs> um, actually, the song we wrote, Huge, it's called Huge, um, and it was the last song we wrote for the album. We wrote it when the album was done basically and decided we wanted one more song on there and I also decided that I wanted to whistle on the album so I went in into that writing session with Mike with that in mind, those mm. objectives, that it had to be a fun up-tempo song that I could whistle on and uh, I also took a story about, about a woman who had said She'd survived cancer. It's just a story I read in the newspaper. Yep. Survived cancer and she said what she'd learnt through that time is that we get our priorities wrong. We make the big things small and the small things bigger. So, you know, little worries, that things that don't matter in life, you know, things that we get obsessed about like work and mm. that. We turn these things into big things yet we don't, we don't sit at the dinner table with our families because, oh, we can do that another time. So we should be making those small things big and make those big things that make them small. So it's a little bit confusing, but yeah. I get confused too. But <laughs> No, I like it. I like it. I like the fact that you've set yourself a challenge <laughs> and you've gone, I'm going to whistle. I want to yeah. whistle in a song. Yep. Yeah. Yep. See, well, I, was, I wasn't born with the whistling gift. Uh -huh. I think there are some people that can and some can't. I'm in the can't category. Yeah, well, see, I whistle all the time to the point of annoyance. Like, when I am coming home, when I was living at home with my family, they always knew that I was about, oh, well, only about 10 metres away, you know. Here here she comes. Oh, the key's going to go on the lock any minute now because the whistle's coming. <laughs> so <laughs> I have always whistled, and I love whistling. And, and uh, you know, people say nice things to you sometimes, like, oh, you're a good whistler. So I got that in my head that maybe I could whistle. And um, it was fun whistling on the album, actually. And you know, tick that checkbox off one of those bucket list bucket items. list things. Yeah, <laughs> done. And uh, the other thing I noticed from the album is, uh, I mean, Rob McCormack produced it, which was absolutely yep. awesome. Uh, he's a very talented individual, and um, uh, he he seems to have this gift about 
being able to bring out the best in the artists that he works with. And yeah. working with a great artist like yourself, it just makes the album even better. But the other thing I noted was um, an unusual person popped up on there, Axel Whitehead. Oh, he's not unusual. <laughs> well, not in a Tom Jones way. But <laughs> yeah, um, no, I, I just I wouldn't expect him to be on a uh, on a country yeah. album. You know I what know. I mean? I know that he's uber talented. Yep. Um, to the point where I think a lot of people misunderstand him as a person because he mm. is so talented. Yeah. But um, uh, yeah, what an what an unusual mix because he's got a very unique voice. I know. Well, that came about because there's a song on my album called My Attraction. Which it's um it's a it's it's a sexy love song basically it's about wanting someone uh, longing for someone and so and you watch Rod- Home and Away. I watch Home and Away. My mum loves Home and Away, um, so we have to watch it occasionally. Um, but Rod said, you know, you should. I think it'd be great to have a real gravelly, sexy voice as the backing vocal on this song. And and Rod had only just finished working with Axel on a small project and said, you know, Axel's the perfect person for this. His voice is really, you know, got that real quality to it that we're looking for. Mm. And um, I went, Let, let's do it. So I met Axel uh, in the studio when we were recording the song and he's a great guy, really, really nice, friendly, so down to earth. And mm. he was stoked to be singing on a country album because he loves country music. He grew up in the country. He wow. loves country music. And um, so his voice, if you you can probably hear, there's quite a bit of country breaking and uh, tone to it. So it, it goes well. And, I mean, it makes the song a little sexy, which it's meant to be. <laughs> well, it, it worked out perfectly. And I, I, I enjoy um, collaborative works. I enjoy yeah. duets. I think they just really... Uh, make it something special. Yeah. You know, and, and Axel was a great selection. Now, yeah. you're, I know we're jumping around a bit and we're talking about the album, which I'm very excited about, but you've moved from being a uh, independent artist mm-hmm. yeah. uh, to the other side of the train tracks. Yeah. How's that move for you? Because that's a really exciting move. Well, yeah, it is exciting. And, you know, I've I've never been one of these people that have said either way, you know, one's right, one's wrong. I've always said you just got to weigh it up in the circumstances and what works. And for this album, the team that I'm working with, which is Core Music and Sony Distribution, they're excited by their album. And so for me, that's, that's exciting. It means that I'm going to have a team that love the album and are going to help me get it into the hands of many, many, many more people, which is what we want. But for me, that doesn't mean I do anything less, any less work than what I was already doing. Because, no. Isn't it know, funny how there's a, a, uh, a thought out there that um, <laughs> label artists do less work than indie artists? Yeah, yeah. Well, you can choose to do less work either way. If you're indie or yeah. label, you can choose to slacken off. But, you know, I don't want to do that. I want my album to be successful and I want people to hear it because it takes too much effort, you know, a year of writing songs and two months in the studio and a fair bit of money too for it just to not be heard. So, you know, I'm not going to put my, take my foot off the accelerator, as they say, and, and just hope that having a bit more help um, is really going to help get this album heard. Well, I don't think anyone could accuse you of taking your foot off the accelerator. And the <laughs> only time you've done that is to put a brick on it. <laughs> That's funny. Yeah, it is. It is. Um, <laughs> You just make that up? Yeah, I did actually. That's I, really good. You know, I could I could almost do this for a living, you know. <laughs> um, now the the album is absolutely brilliant. Tell me about the because uh, we're going to go to the video clip yep. uh, at the end of the interview, as we always do. Uh, so tell me about everyone's a mess. Yeah, well, everybody's a mess is a lyric I wrote in my songwriting book oh, probably two years ago, and and then I headed over to a. Um, songwriting session with Susie Connolly and I just had the first two lines of the verse and and the idea for this song Everybody's a Mess was just taken from me observing, looking around, friends, family, people I don't even know and just thinking all those times you get envious of other, other people, the minute you get envious of them you find out that their lives aren't as perfect as you see, as you think, you know, the, the couple that you go, oh they're so in love, I just want to be like them you find out they're getting a divorce, you know, just things like that. So it's about forgetting what you look at, forgetting 
looking at other people and being jealous and envious. It's about saying, hey, everybody's got their stuff. I'm going to have what I've got and just get happy and love it and live it and just let go. So that's what it's about. What a ripper concept and what a great <laughs> video clip too. Thank um, you. Amber Lawrence, thank you so much for joining me. Everybody else out there, you've got to get your hands on this album. I'm a, a big fan of it. I love it. There's some great stories on there. Produced really well and some talented writing and some great vocals from uh, this lovely lady here. Amber Lawrence, number three. You need to get it now. Download it. That's the, that's the new... Imagine that, like the country ghetto type thing, you know. What up? You know, just my fingers are a bit crooked. I'm just I get a bigger gap there. I can't get them any closer together. Oh, that's no good. That's no good. <laughs> You'll have to work on that. Well, no, that I'll, looks long. That looks terrible too. <laughs> well, it's a fantastic album. Uh, get your hands on it. Here is the clip. Uh, everybody's a mess. Thank you very much, Amber Lawrence. Thank you, Ben. Johnny's so hard up for money But they strutted like they couldn't care He said, don't worry, honey Leave it to the dummies We got more than our fair share Sorensen Real Country Interview. Hear this interview and many more at www.realcountrymix.com.